Hi again, everyone. Today we're going to look at a problem from Laplace transforms. Okay? Here we are asked to calculate the Laplace transform of this function of t. Okay? Now, this u is just known as a step function. Okay? So, it's 0 for t less than 1, and it's 1 for t greater than 1. Okay, so the cross section looks a little bit like a step. Alright, so here's a little graph. It's known as the unit step function or the heavy side function. Okay, so just let's remind ourselves what is the Laplace transform of a function of t? Well, the Laplace transform of a function of t is just this integral here. Notice we take the function of t, multiply it by this exponential function, and integrate it with respect to t over this half line. Now, because t is the dummy variable, and there's an s up here, the whole thing is actually a function of s. Now, when we uh, denote things in the context of Laplace transforms, lowercase letters usually mean uh, functions of t, and uppercase letters, capital letters, mean the Laplace transform of that uh, lowercase letter. All right, so how do we solve this problem? Well. First thing we recognize is that if we put this into here, it may actually be quite difficult to evaluate. So we don't usually evaluate these transforms directly from the integral. We use a uh, Laplace transform table. Okay? Now, if you try to look this up on the Laplace transform table, you won't see it anywhere, but you will see the following. We're going to apply the second shifting theorem. Okay, so what is that? Well, the second shifting theorem allows you to take the transform of a product where you have the step function multiplied with some other function, and they've both got the same shift in them. In this case, the shift is one unit to the right, okay? But just algebraically, note the t minus one in brackets and the t minus one in brackets. If these aren't the same, then you can't apply the second shifting theorem straight to it. So what is the second shifting theorem? Well, The Laplace transform of these of this product is just this product, where big F of S is a Laplace transform of little f of t. Okay, so here we have f of t minus a, and here we have f of t. So the first thing we do is uh, compare with our original uh, problem, find out what a is and what f of t minus a is. So all right, so a is going to be one. And f of t minus a is going to be cos of 3, t minus 1. All right, so if f of t minus 1 is this, what's a little f of t minus 1 is this, 
what's little f of t? Well, we replace t minus 1 in brackets with just t, okay? So if we replace this whole bracket here with just t, I get cos of 3t. All right? So we've worked out what little f of t is. Let's work out the transform. Okay? Now, to work out the transform of this, you just go to the table. This, the, the Laplace transform of, of this will be in any simple Laplace transform table. So, from the table, the Laplace transform The Laplace transform of cos 3t is s all over s squared plus 3 squared. Okay? So what do we do with that? Well, we've got the Laplace transform of little f of t now. That's just big F of s. Okay? So we recognize that that's actually... the thing we're looking for, all right? So now we, we take this, put it in here, and multiply by e to the minus as. So the second shifting theorem gives the following. The Laplace transform of this is e to the minus as times this. Now, a is 1, so this will be e to the minus s multiplied by this. Okay, so that's your Laplace transform down here of this. Now, why, why are we interested in Laplace transforms? The basic idea here is to use them to solve ordinary differential equations. Okay? So what we do is we transform the problem to a simpler algebraic setting, solve the algebraic problem, and then, un uh, I guess, re-transform everything back to the original setting. Okay? It's a very powerful tool. But that's the subject of another video.